In this video, I will show you, how to build an Android tablet by yourself. You don't need to be an expert to build this tablet. With your basic knowledge, you can build this tablet and use it for industrial applications, internet surfing, home automation, gaming, etc. Now, let's get started. For this build, you will need Raspberry Pi 3B or B Plus board. Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen display. SanDisk Ultra 32GB or 16GB micro SDHC card. Raspberry Pi 7-inch LCD touchscreen case. Raspberry Pi dual fan with heatsink. Raspberry Pi 5V 2.5A power supply. I am using the Raspberry Pi 3 board for this project because of two reasons. The first reason is, the Android OS which I am going to use for this build is not available for the Raspberry Pi 4 boards yet. And the second reason is the Raspberry Pi 4 board is now available in the market so it's easy to get hands on Raspberry Pi 3 board with a good discount. For this build, I will be using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus board with a heat sink and fan already attached. So in this video, I will not cover the heat sink and fan assembly part. I have added links to all the products that I used down in the description. Once you have all the required components, start by launching the Microsoft Edge browser. Now type mteria.com into your address bar and press enter. For this build, I will be using mteria OS as my tablet OS. Emteria OS is an Android open source project based software platform for embedded systems by the Emteria GmbH. It's a commercial, real time capable IoT OS made for the industry and personal use. The main user friendly and industrial ready features of Emteria OS are intuitive interface, up to date security, automatic updates, cloud services, device management, simple customization, long term support, etc. Another main advantage of using Emteria OS is that you can set up, control, and monitor devices with Emteria OS from a browser. Emteria OS supports devices like Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, Artista IoT Controller, Geniatech Developer Board 4, Raspberry Pi Compute Module Development Kit, Acme CM3 Panel, etc. You can also request a customized version of Emteria OS for your product. Emteria OS is available in three licenses. Evaluation, Personal, and Business. On the pricing page, you can compare the main features of licenses and choose the license according to your requirement. Using the evaluation version you can test Emteria OS at no cost. But a device reboot is enforced every 8 hours of continuous run time. For a one-time payment of €19 Euros per device, you can purchase a personal license and use your device for personal use without any limitations. If you are looking to build an Android device for your personal use then I will highly recommend purchasing the personal license. And if you are looking for business solutions then you can get in touch with Emteria for the license. Emteria is offering up to 85% discounts for volume purchases, OS customization, and support services. To set up Emteria OS on your device first, click the register link on the top right corner of the window. Now a create new account window will appear. Enter your email address in the provided field then click register. Now you will be redirected to the Emteria login page and a message will be shown that confirmation link was sent to the email address you provided. Next, log in to your email account and confirm your email address by clicking the link provided in the email. Once the email address is verified, you will be redirected to finish registration page. Here, enter your account details to finish the registration of your Emteria account. I am entering details only for the required fields like password and full name. After entering the details, accept the terms of services then click finish registration. Now your Emteria account is successfully created. Like I said before if you are looking for a serious build, then I will highly recommend purchasing a license. Once you purchased the Emteria license, you can manage your license from the customer area. Between thank you Emteria for providing the license. 
Even if you don't have a license, you can still use your OS as an evaluation copy. Now go to the Mteria OS Installer download page by clicking Downloads. Mteria OS Installer is available for Linux, Windows and Mac OS. Download the installer application by clicking the download link under your operating system section. I am using Windows 10 so I am downloading the installer for Windows 10. Clicking the download link, your browser will immediately start downloading the installer to your PC. Once the installer is downloaded, launch the application by double-clicking the downloaded file. You can install the Mteria installer just like you install any other application on your PC. But make sure to install all recommended components to prevent runtime problems. After the installation process is completed, click the Start menu then click the Mteria shortcut menu. Once the Mteria installer is launched, log in to your Mteria account using your email and password. After you have successfully logged in, select the Raspberry Pi 3B slash B plus from the Select Target drop-down menu. Next, select the latest version from the OS version drop-down menu. Click Continue. Now attach the SD card to your computer. If your SD card is not detected automatically by the Mteria installer, then click Refresh Drives. Next click flash and a warning message will be shown that all data on the drive will be erased. Before clicking OK, make sure that you have backed up your data from the drive. Clicking OK will start the download and installation process. The download time will depend on your network speed so wait for the download and installation process to complete. Once the process is finished click Exit Installer to exit the installer window. Now the software part of our build is completed, let's start the hardware part by building the touchscreen. First, carefully pull up the plastic clip of the connector on the underside of the display controller board. Now connect the large ribbon cable from the screen to the connector. Secure the ribbon cable in place by pushing the plastic clip back into place. Next, lie the controller board onto the back of the display. Fix the controller board into the back of the display using the four standoffs provided. Now pull up the plastic clip of the panel 1 connector and connect the small ribbon cable from the screen to the board. Secure the ribbon by pushing the plastic clip back into place. Next, pull up the plastic clip of the display connector on the controller board and connect one side of the provided DSi ribbon cable to the connector. While connecting, make sure that the silver contact is facing up. Just like we did before, secure the cable by pushing the plastic clip back into place. The display assembly is now complete, next mount the Raspberry Pi on top of the four standoffs. Secure the Raspberry Pi board to the standoffs using the provided screws. Now insert the SD card we have set up with Mteria Android operating system into the micro SD card slot on the underside of the Raspberry Pi. I am inserting the card now because it will be difficult to insert the card after connecting the DSi cable to the connector. 
Next, connect the other side of the DSi cable to the Raspberry Pi's display port. Connect the red jumper wire to the right pin of the display board pin header marked 5V and connect the black wire to the left pin marked GND. Next, connect the other side of red wire to the 5V power and black to the ground pin of the Raspberry Pi. In my case, pin 4 and pin 6 are already occupied for the cooling fan, so I will be using pin 2 and pin 14 for this tutorial. You can use the pinout diagram shown on the screen to choose the pins. As we are using Pi 3B+, there is no need of connecting the green and yellow jumper wires. Now secure the Raspberry Pi board and display controller by using the case. While attaching make sure that no cable is stuck between the display and case. Fix the case to display using the provided screws. Attach the back panel to the case and our Android tablet is ready to boot. Now connect the USB power supply to the Raspberry Pi's power port and connect the adapter into a power outlet. As the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a power switch, as soon as you connect it to a power outlet, it will turn on. Your Mteria Android tablet is booting up for the first time, so this will take a bit of time. During the installation process, your device may restart multiple times. Now Mteria Android system configuration setup is completed. Click Next. On the language page, select your desired language for the OS and click Next. Next on the date and time page, you can configure the system date, time, time zones, etc. After the date and time is set, click Next. On Select Wi-Fi page, you can connect your tablet to your network. To connect to your Wi-Fi network first click Setup. Now turn on the Wi-Fi toggle switch. Select the Wi-Fi network that you want by tapping it. If it's locked, enter its password, and then tap Connect. Once you are connected to your network, click Next. If you have already purchased the Mteria OS license you can activate your copy of OS on the Device Activation page. To activate your copy of OS, click Activate and you will be asked how you want to activate your OS. If you have the activation code with you then tap Continue with activation code to activate the OS using activation code. And if you don't have the activation code with you, then tap Continue with Mteria account to detect your activation code automatically. While activating the OS you will receive a message that the license code cannot be disconnected or transferred to another device. Click OK. Now your Mteria OS is successfully activated. Click Next to continue. On Extra Options page, you can apply any provisioning or customization settings to your device by updating to the latest version from Mteria OS. If you have not made any customizations, then you can skip this step by clicking Next. Next on the License Agreement page read the License Agreement carefully then accept the Terms and Conditions by checking the I Agree to the Terms and Conditions of Use checkbox. Click Next to continue and on the next page, a message will be shown that a reboot is required to complete the activation and configuration. Click Reboot. Once the OS is rebooted, you'll get the Android desktop on your screen. And on successful activation, the watermark on the right bottom side will disappear.
Like you may have noticed Play Store is not installed by default on Mteria OS but you can install apps easily using F-Droid. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, take a few seconds to subscribe and click the bell icon to get all notifications of our latest updates.